I wrote a book in 1979-80 uh, called of Kennedys and Kings and the last few months um, September through about the end of November I did a lot of the key writing just by myself out here my family went back to uh, the mainland this is the van that I'm taking on my trip to probably Ohio. Do you think that's going to be the big swing state? Is that where where could my services be most used? That's kind of like where do you think that state's going to be? Ohio, Pennsylvania. And another interesting thing would be which southern state uh, Barack has the best chance to break through in and see how that's going. Could be North Carolina. Conceivably, could be Georgia. Oh, well, most of all, Virginia. Yes. Virginia is going to be a big battleground. We, I think, we have a very good chance of carrying. Virginia. Are you? Are you part of the campaign? Are you involved in in his campaign? Yeah, in, in I'm what somewhere? they call a surrogate. What does that mean? Well, I've <laughs> I've been <laughs> playing with the word ever since. They, they made me a surrogate. I don't know how many they have. I, if I were guessing, I guess they maybe have something like 40 who are actually official surrogates. Um, they have a whole surrogate structure. Uh, it means you're representing Barack. And uh, the, the origin of the word, I want to <laughs> find out now that I am one. Um, uh, you get called when the uh, American Federation of Teachers uh, Union uh, in, came over and endorsed Barack a month or so ago. He couldn't go to the convention except by uh, uh, satellite. And uh, they wanted me there for a talk at the convention. And uh, I, went, I went out to Chicago for that. <clears throat> they uh, wanted me to introduce him at the... T uh, Cornell College in Iowa when he was laying out his national service, citizen service plan, and also for the uh, race speech at the Constitution. That was the hall. that was the big one. And uh, they were that was. Well, you must be very it, honored to have. Been if you're looking around for honors, that it meant a lot to uh, have the chance to introduce him. But usually, you get sent somewhere where he isn't. And in fact, you're mainly welcome if they know they're not going to get Barack. Obviously, everybody wants Barack, or secondly, Michelle, right. uh, and now Biden, yeah. uh, and uh, rightly so. But there are 67 counties in Pennsylvania, and he will get to a number of them. But every one of them has party dinners, pre-election rallies, opening an office, and uh, so they're... You know, do you the, help? Do you do you help? There, there are a lot of surrogates who go for the office. I, in the primary, uh, the the guy driving me around and sort of piloting it uh, measured 2,600 miles. I think it was that we made around the state to office openings and party dinners and debating with Doesn't somebody. Doesn't that get tiring for you, though? I, I was mean, I was more exhausted at the end of the Pennsylvania primary than any time since. Uh, end of basic training in the Army Air Corps, Keesler Field, Biloxi, Gosh. Mississippi, 1944, June. I, ca I came back and I said, I, you know, generally I don't like to say it because there's this theory that if you say you're tired, you're more, you, you become more tired. But I just admitted I was sort of exhausted. I, I sort of pushed to the limit on that one. And, Good uh, gosh. Oh, my But gosh. then, then, uh, you know, uh, a week, yeah, you keep, a, week, keep it on. a week at Nantucket wipes wipes all that out. I just came back from the convention, of course. And right. So was uh, that fun? God, I tremendous. Were you there in the stadium too? At the yeah, the Pennsylvania delegation asked me to sit with them. I uh, can't couldn't be a delegate because I live in Washington D.C. Right. Okay. From Pennsylvania, right. and right. I and I, it wasn't fair to ask to be in Washington since I hadn't done anything in the party there. Right. So, they, so what was that like? Uh, you know, just the energy of it. Well, you you could say that <laughs> that uh, one one lens to look at my life is uh, uh, up and down with fourteen presidents uh, in search of a great one. 
and I and I uh, I believe I grew up with a great president Franklin Roosevelt. Uh, in, the, my family was uh, not political, but they were patriotic, you might say, or they were civic-minded. And uh, when the President of the United States had a fireside chat uh, addressed to the, the people of the United States, particularly during a time of real trial during the Great Depression, and then as we got toward the war, they believed that when he spoke, a fireside chat, for example, um, we should, if not by a fire, we should sit by our radio and listen to the president. And by the time I was 10, I declared myself for Franklin Roosevelt in the Republican family. And I wouldn't ride to school for the last uh, couple of weeks because it had a Republican uh, bumper sticker on the car for Alf Land and uh, the governor of, of Kansas. And when I got to the Senate, so your parents were Republicans. Yeah, my parents. What did they? How did they feel about this? It wasn't boy a, it, being. They, so they, they were. I would suspect they felt somewhere between amused and proud. They were not angry about it at all, and it wasn't a rebellion from them. I mean, it was. It was you know, it was a very minor, friendly rebellion. Let's okay. put it that way. All right. Uh, they were trying to impose their politics on right, me. Right, right. Uh, I did have one grandmother who was a Southern Democrat. Uh, and uh, from Arkansas, and uh, I, you know, I remember in the family debates, uh, my father would say, "Well, why do you always vote for the, your party? Don't you ever vote otherwise?" She said, "Of course I would. I, I vote for the best man. It's just he's always been a Democrat." So there, there was that one Democrat, and she took me around the world um, a couple of years after that, 1930. 738 when I was 12. Uh, she had found a very cheap way called cheap tramp trips that, <clears throat> that bought unused space or very low cost space on liners or ocean liners or on freighters uh, that took 10 or 20 passengers. And she took me for six months. She found that doing that she could save enough money so she could live a uh, year in her own apartment in New York City and so every few years, every year or so she went on a trip somewhere and she had done one trip around the world on freighters and liners and, and uh, persuaded my family to, to send me with her. Uh, partly they were a little worried about her health and they thought that, you know, it would help to have How her. How old were you then? T 12? Turning 12. Not turning 12? Turned 12 Big influence on you? I think experience? It, Absolutely, I fell in love with the world in a sense, uh, and you know, came came back really as the the world is the frame in which I'm, I look at most things. So that was in the 30s. That was on the eve of World War II, 38, 30, late 37 and through wow. June of 38. We saw Mussolini take Italy out of the League of Nations from the balcony in Piazza Venezia. Uh, we heard him and uh, then huddled on the balcony of the church to watch the fascists torchlight parade against the English and the West as, as Mussolini defied them and declared the second Roman Empire, having just conquered Ethiopia. Uh, 